Hi Bobcats! In this section we're going to take a look at a very powerful calculation tool for chemistry called dimensional analysis. You might have seen this in a previous chemistry class or even possibly a physics class. If you've never seen it before, you're still in great shape. Um, this is a very powerful tool and it's very easy to use once you get the hang of it. Um, and if you haven't seen this tool in a while, again, don't worry, um, you'll get the hang of it real quick. You'll, it, it's like riding a bicycle. The objectives for this section are to figure out how to build our conversion factors if we know that two different quantities are equivalent to one another and then to convert something from one set of units to another by using this dimensional analysis process. This is a typical uh, type of process that we can tackle by dimensional analysis. I like to start with it because it gives us a chance to look at something concrete that you can calculate without doing dimensional analysis so that you can believe me when we get to our final answer. It asks us to convert five and a half feet to inches. Well, one foot is 12 inches. So five feet would be 12 times five, which is 60. But then we've got another half foot, which would be another six inches. So we know that all told, this, is, this should give us an answer of 66 inches. Okay, so if we're gonna set up to solve this problem by dimensional analysis, here's what our basic setup is gonna look like. The first thing that we're gonna do is take the number that we're given to convert, which is this five and a half feet, uh, write the number with its unit and place it over one. The number one there is just to turn this whole number into a fraction. Over the years, it seems like students are much more comfortable multiplying a fraction times a fraction rather than multiplying a whole number times a fraction. So the only purpose in life for that one in the denominator is just to make it look like a fraction because uh, dividing by one doesn't change anything. Up in the top, we're putting the number we're given, which is the five and a half, and its unit, which is feet. Now we're going to multiply that by a conversion factor. The conversion factor is a fraction where whatever's in the top and whatever's in the bottom are equivalent ways of expressing the same quantity. So for instance, if you were to take a standard ruler that's one foot long, it's also marked as 12 inches so that the length represented by that ruler could be written either as 12 inches or as one foot. So we're going to put those two numbers into the conversion factor. The way we're going to decide who goes where is whatever unit we were originally given, that number that has that original unit has to go down in the bottom. So feet have to go in the bottom of this conversion factor, which and the number with it was one. So one foot will be in the bottom. Then the other number goes in the top, which is the 12 inches. And that's the target. That's the thing we're trying to find. So the target goes on top, which is inches. And the unit that matches the given is going to go on the bottom. Now, if you take a calculator and you take 5.5 times 12, you end up with 66. So hopefully uh, you believe me that this uh, technique works because it matches what we came up with before we uh, started dimensional analysis. The problem we just worked wasn't hard to run through your calculator. There were just a couple of numbers involved. Some of the problems that we'll set up later this semester will have a lot more numbers in them. So I just want to give you this procedure now. We'll revisit it later. Um, but it's, it's just good to set your thinking and set your habit right now when we're first doing dimensional analysis. Um, there are so many different ways to run this through a calculator. Um, but there are some reasons that I really want you to try doing it this way. Um, there are many reasons. One of the reasons is that I am not fond of parentheses. And what I find is that students tend to make mistakes when they enter lots of numbers with lots of parentheses. So I'm going to show you a technique that avoids using parentheses. 
Um, I'm also going to show you a technique to try to minimize how many numbers we're typing into our calculator. You won't be with me for very long before you discover that I hit the wrong buttons on my calculator regularly. That's one of the reasons you'll hear me talk about like estimating answers before we ever start so that when I the, the when I get to the end and the calculator is telling me an answer, then I know if that's a reasonable answer or not. And if I get something that's really not reasonable, chances are I just typed it into the calculator wrong. Okay, so here are my suggestions for how you do this. And some of these won't make a lot of sense right now because we had such a small example in the last slide. Um, a couple chapters down the road, you're going to be dealing with lots of numbers and this will make a lot more sense then. So when you go to put this calculation into your calculator where we're multiplying fractions. You can start with any number that's in the top. I usually start with the top left and work my way left to right just so that I don't skip any numbers. But you can start with any number in the top. For all of the other numbers that you are seeing in the top of the fraction, multiply. So you hit the times key and then the other number. Then you the times key and another number. The times key and another number. For all of the numbers that you see in the bottom of the fractions, use the divide key. So divide and then type in the number. And then if there's a different number in the bottom, divide by that number. And you just keep hitting divide for every key that's in, or for every number that's in the denominator. Um, if you have any ones, don't type them in because multiplying by one and dividing by one will not change the value of your answer. So why run the risk that you're gonna hit the wrong button? Once you've entered all of these numbers, hit the equal sign and that should give you the correct answer. Um, the way that I think about um, this, these two statements here, numbers in the top go with the times key and numbers in the bottom go with the divide key. It's just this is the language the calculator speaks. If we are not using parentheses and you're multiplying and dividing fractions, the way you tell your calculator that a number is in the top of the fraction is by hitting the times key and the way you tell your calculator that a number is in the bottom is by hitting the divide key. So you're just telling the, the calculator where it is when you hit those keys. So here's the first of the examples I'd like to work out. I'm going to work this fairly quickly. So while you're watching this video, there may be points when you want to just like hit pause, um, maybe rewind a little bit, but I'm going to work through this relatively quickly. Um, so we want to convert seven and a half pounds to kilograms, and we also want to convert that to grams. And we're given the conversion factor that one kilogram is equal to 2.2 pounds. So to start the conversion, I'm going to take the number that I'm given and its unit, and I'm going to put that over one. So seven and a half pounds over one. And then I'm going to multiply by a conversion factor. The conversion factor that I have has pounds, so that pounds has to go in the bottom to cancel out. So I'm building this from the bottom to get things to cancel. So I've got 2.2 uh, pounds in the bottom, and then that means that the kilogram will have to go in the top. So one kilogram goes up there in the top, pounds, cancel out with pounds. To run this through my calculator, I'm going to start with the 7.5, so 7.5, and then I'll hit divide by 2.2 equals. And that's giving me an answer of 3.4 kilograms. Now to convert that to grams, kilo means a thousand. So 3.4 kilograms is the same thing as 3.4 thousand grams or 3,400 grams. For our next example, we're asked to convert 7.29 times 10 to the 24th atoms of gold to moles. At this point, we haven't discussed anything about atoms and moles, really. So um, we, don't, we don't really even know what those words mean, but that's okay because we're given the conversion factor. We are told that one mole is equivalent to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. As long as we have that equivalence, we can build a conversion factor, even if we don't know what these quantities represent. So we're gonna start by writing the number we're given 7.29 times 10 to the 24th with its unit, atoms, 
And in chemistry, if we're actually given a chemical, we tend to also label with the chemical. So 7.29 times 10 to the 24th atoms of gold. And now we're going to multiply by the conversion factor. Atoms have to go down on the bottom. And we're looking for moles, so I'm going to put moles on the top. Uh, the conversion factor says that the number that goes with atoms is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and the number that goes with moles is 1. 1 mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So now I need to run this in my calculator. I can ignore the 1s. I don't have to type them in, but in the top I have 7.29 EE24, and then divided by 6.02 EE23 equals, and my calculator is telling me that the final answer on this is 12.1 moles. If you are getting a power of 10, like, you know, you're getting like times 10 to the 40 something if uh, 47th power or something like that. Um, you're, you need to go back and review how to type numbers in scientific notation into your calculator. Uh, you may be doing it right for the numerator, but then um, running into some problems uh, with your technique in the denominator. For our third example, I'm going to demonstrate that with conversion factors, sometimes we need to string multiple conversion factors together to get our final answer. So let's try to convert, uh, let's see, what would this number be? 3,628,800 seconds to weeks. Um, hmm, this will be a little challenging. 3,628,800 628,800 seconds. Uh, I'll take the number we're given with its unit and place it over 1. Now, I don't know about you, but off the top of my head, I have no idea how many seconds are in a week. But I do know that there are 60 seconds in one minute. So the first thing I'm going to do is convert from seconds to minutes. So for every 60 seconds, there's one minute. I'm getting closer to weeks, but I'm not there. So the bottom of the next step needs to have minutes. And I know that for every 60 minutes, there's one hour. Okay, hopefully you're starting to see how we're going to put all this together. For every, um, it, there's a relationship then between hours and days. Uh, there are 24 hours in one day. And then I'm going to try to cram it all in here. Um, there are going to be seven days in one week. Um, so what I'm doing is just a step at a time. I'm trying to go from seconds to weeks. Well, by setting things up this way, notice that I started with units of seconds, and I'm also dividing by units of seconds, so seconds go away. I have minutes in the top followed by minutes in the bottom, so they're going to cancel out. Hours is in the top and hours is in the bottom, so that cancels out. Ditto for days. And the only unit that's left in the end is weeks. Now I'm going to run this through my calculator. When we have more than one number in the denominator, we want to use the divide key in front of each number. That's what you do when you don't use parentheses. The times key tells the calculator something's in the top, or just plain entering it to begin with tells the calculator this is in the top. The divide key says it's in the bottom. So I'm going to take 3628800 divided by 60, then divided by 60 again, divided by 24, and then divided by 7. And that gives me a final answer of 6 weeks. 6 weeks is um, equivalent to that many seconds. Circling back to our objectives, we want to build conversion factors by taking equivalents, uh, two different ways of expressing the same quantity. We're going to stick one in the top, one in the bottom to make units cancel out. And this process allows us to convert from one unit to another, and it's called dimensional analysis.